I will never get on a plane unless there's two Delta pilots, at least two Delta pilots. Never. On that plane, never. On February 4th, 2023, the two pilots in control of FedEx Flight 1432 avoided disaster when the Boeing 767 they were operating was cleared to land in Austin Bergstrom International Airport on the same runway that a Southwest 737 was cleared for takeoff. I happened to look outside at uh, just the right time, saw the silhouette of the Southwest airplane right where we planned to be touching down with closure still, so we were definitely going faster than them. And uh, that's when I called for the go around and the captain executed, no questions asked. He, he never saw the Southwest plane. It was after we were already climbing away, he asked me why I called it. So if there were only one pilot, if you didn't happen to be looking at the exact right spot, you wouldn't see it and it'd be too late and uh, we'd have two large airplanes crashed on the runway. With the planes coming within just 150 feet of each other, the FedEx pilots quickly aborted their landing prompting a U.S. NTSB meeting to discuss near misses and runway safety. Two crew members were on the flight deck of the FedEx plane. Two crew members who I believe prevented a disaster from occurring in Austin that day. Those two crew members are heroes in my book. It's hard to believe that some aircraft manufacturers and special interest groups are willing to put profits ahead of safety and reduce the number of pilots required to be on the flight deck. As airline pilots, we know that no level of automation can match a flight crew's training, instincts, and ability to solve complex problems that arise during a flight. On a takeoff from Singapore to Sydney in 2010, Qantas Flight 32, an Airbus A380 carrying 469 passengers and flight crew, experienced engine failure just four minutes after takeoff. The crew heard two loud bangs and the aircraft displayed multiple failure warnings. The noises were the result of an uncontained failure of the number two engine. Debris from the engine impacted the aircraft, causing significant damage to the structure and airplane systems and resulted in fuel leakage from the left wing fuel tank. According to the Australian Transport Safety Board final report, the uncontained engine failure was caused by fatigue cracking in a stub pipe in the engine, causing an oil leakage followed by an engine fire. The flight and cabin crew were commended for managing the event as a competent team in accordance with standard operating procedures and practices. Their teamwork, problem solving and decision making resulted in a safe landing and no injuries to passengers and crew. History has shown that all technology and systems are prone to failure. When these failures occur, it is the well-trained pilot with the appropriate skills who ensure the safety of crew and passengers. In aviation, we have redundancy and backup for all safety critical systems like electrical and hydraulic systems. Redundancy means if one fails, the other one prevents the impact of potential failures. This philosophy is at the core of modern aviation. Currently, there are also two pilots at the controls of an airplane. Two pilots work as a team. They serve as a critical safety net and mitigate potential hazards before they escalate. They are indispensable in averting crisis and ensuring the best outcome in emergency situations. But instead of embracing our safety redundancies, airlines and manufacturers are pushing for a single pilot concept. And this is just a perfect example of corporate greed that will cost lives. This one pilot concept is currently under evaluation in the EU Aviation Safety Agency, EASA. The process started in late 2021 when EASA established an expert group composed of industry stakeholders to draft a report that would serve as a basis of its best intervention strategy an EASA standard procedure that helps the agency shape its rulemaking priorities. The second phase of the project recently started in 2024, with research being conducted into the hazards and risks of reduced crew operations, as well as the potential mitigations. 
while the group's primary objectives include developing a comprehensive risk assessment framework and undertaking an in-depth investigation of key safety hazards and corresponding mitigations, there have been concerns for years that IASA has been putting economics before safety. In this instance, IASA funded this work with an investment of almost 1 million euros and initiated regulatory activity before study was even complete. The EU regulatory authority is heavily vested and invested in the outcome of this work and continues to make decisions to move forward well before the safety work has been fully vetted. Additionally, a group of aviation and transport engineering organizations has been tasked with assessing the feasibility of implementing a one-pilot concept within the EU regulatory framework, which could eventually amend the existing legal framework applicable to air operations and aircrew training within the EU, thus allowing the one-pilot operations concept. Regulatory change historically is driven by the need to address existing or anticipated safety issues or concerns. Or in other words, to address and solve a safety problem. This one is quite different. Which safety case is being solved by removing one pilot from the flight deck, which means reducing or even eliminating redundancy? There will be a long list of additional risks and hazards that are being introduced. This concept is obviously commercially driven by some airlines that see a potential of saving money by reducing the number of pilots during long-haul flights. I'm sure it's tempting to gain this competitive edge through the elimination of this pilot. However, they may find themselves unpleasantly surprised to discover that commercial incentives are an extremely risky driver in aviation. We all know that businesses will pursue avenues to make a profit, but regulators must preserve safety. And we certainly expect our regulators, the Federal Aviation Administration and EASA, to hold the line on safety. Earlier this year, we were extremely encouraged when the Department of Transportation announced a mandate requiring most freight and passenger railroads to operate trains with two-person crews. This mandate demonstrated that the DOT again put safety first and reinforced its core belief that two-person crews are a critical feature for the safe operations of trains and planes. We must continue to dig in and stop special interests from gambling with safety by trying to eliminate the most important safety features on trains and airplanes, the people at the controls. Likely the most famous example of how two pilots take control and save lives when the unexpected occurs is the miracle on the Hudson. Shortly after takeoff, multiple bird strikes caused a dual engine failure on US Airways Flight 1549, bound from New York's LaGuardia Airport to Charlotte, North Carolina. The two pilots on the flight deck worked closely in coordination to bring the aircraft down safely in the Hudson River. According to the National Transportation Safety Board, Captain Sully Sullenberger's decision to ditch in the river rather than try to reach an airport improved the chances of a survivable outcome. Moreover, the crew's decision to activate the aircraft's auxiliary power unit early during the emergency, which was not in accordance with checklists, ensured the availability of electrical power and was essential to the outcome. All 155 people on board the aircraft were rescued. Flying is the safest mode of transportation in the world, in large part because of the two highly trained and experienced pilots on the flight deck for each flight. Removing them from the equation will result in disaster. While we embrace technology, it is certainly not a substitute for having at least two pilots on the flight deck operating an aircraft and we should not allow CEOs and their lobbyists to try to convince us otherwise. Look, if we settled for equivalent in the 1980s, we'd see many tragedies today. We didn't settle for equivalent then, and we certainly shouldn't settle for equivalent now. It's obvious that manufacturers are pushing for swift approval of single pilot flights. It's a dangerous concept driven solely by the commercial interests of manufacturers and airlines. 
The global pilot's position has been consistent from the beginning. Removing one pilot from the flight deck is a gamble with safety. Merely maintaining current safety standards is insufficient. Any concept that seeks a reduction in crew must demonstrate a higher level of safety to justify that implementation. That is why the global pilot community has joined forces and thousands of airline pilots are unified in the fight against reduced crew operations. Engaged in a worldwide campaign that ensures that the current standards and regulations that have helped make aviation the safest form of transportation won't be eroded. In aviation, redundancy is the requirement. This philosophy is at the core of modern aviation. I will never get on a plane unless there's two Delta pilots, at least two Delta pilots never. on that plane, never. And uh, we certainly use technology to help our pilots, to help our ground staff, to help our people that manage the, the company make better decisions. But you can never replace human judgment in a business like Delta.